card. So I'm going to wait for you guys to start popping in for my live today. Move my punch over here, I think. My lights. I'm trying to see if I can see everything and I'm in camera and all that good stuff. Hopefully I am. And let me know when you're here. Hey, Lou. I hope everybody is doing well. I'm just gonna see when everybody pops in, hopefully. How are you doing tonight, Lou? I hope everybody's doing good. Sorry for the silence. I was hoping that more people would pop in. I guess I can just start. Um, let's talk about Paper Pumpkin. All the little things is the April kit. You have until the 10th of April to sign up. And don't miss it because it's gonna be a cool kit. It's coming with a free gift, which is um, a box organizer that's included. Hey Joyce, thanks you made it in. Thanks for making it in. Kelly here just waiting for everybody to start rolling in if you are new to my channel or new to a live or just new to saying hi please say hi and let us know where you're here from I appreciate you guys being here so don't miss out on paper pumpkin because it's going to be a good one nine cards three each three designs there's going to be some iridescent foil die cuts um shaded spruces the ink spot of course it's going to come with a pretty cool stamp set um more information on my website inkyhandswarmhearts.com um and when you go there you're going to click on shop with me and there's a drop down there and choose paper pumpkin you can see all the information about the latest paper pumpkin all right let's see online exclusives if you haven't checked out the online exclusives we have quite a bit of product on there um some of it is already starting to sell out so don't miss out on some of the cool stuff um i did an entire week on youtube and on my blog of the irresistible blooms bundle um it has beautiful paper and I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Check that out. I think the basic 3D embossing folders are low inventory or they might be not orderable. I'm not sure. The classic letters. There's also an adorable little rhino set. Um, this gorgeous um, paper, the Naturally Gilded, which has uh, copper, gold, and silver kind of leafy images. Really, really pretty. Don't forget about Kit's collection. Kaleidoscope Kit is our newest kit. It's always nice to have kits because it makes quick cards and they're always so beautiful. Um, there's laser cut die cuts in this one. So this one's kind of cool. Um, check that out. That's the latest one for the month of March. February's was a wreath, which is kind of cool for Easter Mother's Day. And January's was the Saying Thanks non-stamping kit. This one is super cool. I have it. It's awesome. So much you can do with it to, you know, take it up a notch if you want to add a little bit of ink. But it's a great beginner kit. So if you want to have somebody that doesn't really know how to stamp or is brand new to it or a little bit intimidated by stamping itself, this is a non-stamping kit and it's a really fun one. Great colors. Um watercolor look. I really love this one. Okay, today we are going to be making one of my tiny treats um, for Tiny Easter Treat Week. Um, this week I have been doing small treats and every day has been a different one. Let me grab the ones I've done so far. 
Sunday was this triangle box. There is the side. So it's a triangular box treat, and I used painted poppies for the stamp set and Stampin' Blends, white um, glittered organdy ribbon, um, and I used the clearance rack fancy label punch, I believe is the name of it. It's on the clearance rack, and it's what did this really cool label here. I think it's like a 20 something dollar punch for like 10 or $12 now. So I used that and then I used the essential tag punch, which is what this little shape here is for this little nugget treat holder. And I used um, flowers of friendship stamp set and the, the punch that goes with that, which punches out the flower and the leaf. So this was Sunday, Monday. And today we are going to be making a mini Easter basket. So I'm sure you've seen it in the photo when you joined the live. And I have some Hershey Kisses that are a little plaid. So I chose to use um, Fresh Freesia for the color of my DSP. You can use any DSP. You could use any cardstock. And I'm using the Medium Daisy um, flower for the basket. The little tag at the top is stamped with the words from Hydrangea Haven. And you could actually stamp a flower from there and put it here instead of the daisy if you wish. Or make a card and then hand out this little cute treat basket. It's okay, Eileen. Thanks for joining us. I think people are busy today. So there is that. So we are using Hydrangea Haven. Here is the little sentiment. Now this is shown at 75%, so it's a little smaller than it actually is. But you have the beautiful Hydrangea flower, the overlay, the overlay for the leaves. This little piece here would be really pretty on the side of the basket, or this little cluster here. And then there's colors to color that in if you don't wanna color it. And then there's also individual pieces and the die itself um, cuts out individual flower pieces and multiples at one time if you wanted to add some of those maybe to the handle if you decided oops to use that stamp set so this is a really fun quick and easy and you can make them fast and without using a lot of products I chose to use the tag. You can see this little white one here, but this little tag die is in the meadow dies. I love this set of dies. If you don't have the meadow dies, get them. They're fantastic. Um, I did a whole um, blog post on how you can color them with your blends to make them look watercolored. I've also done a video on YouTube using the meadow dies where I actually watercolored them with ink and water. Um, so you can check that out also on here. We are going to use the 2021 to 2022 in color paper, and it comes in the five colors, pale papaya, fresh freesia, soft succulent, polished pink. Thank you guys. And evening evergreen. Those are the five colors. You only need... Um, a very small amount of paper, I'm trying to move everything out of the way, <laughs> to make this project. And I added um, the Orchid Oasis just to add a little bit darker purple ribbon to attach the little tag onto my basket here on the handle. So let's go, oh, and I also used the Glossy Accents because we have these really pretty purple um, little embellishments. So you need a three by three inch piece. So you, out of one sheet of six by six, you can get four of these basket bases, okay? Guess what we're gonna use? You guessed it, Simply Scoreboard, my favorite thing. <laughs> so this is the polka dot side, the plaid side is the other side. So if you want a polka dot basket, you can put this side on the outside if you want the plaid. We're gonna put the plaid. I chose to use the plaid because I had the plaid kisses, but if you don't have plaid kisses, you could do the polka dot. You could do a different color, a different pattern, anything that you want. 
So we're gonna go ahead and score this. I'm gonna turn it to the wrong side. And I'm gonna score this at one and two, and then I'm gonna rotate it and score it at one and two. And what that does, hopefully you guys can see when I bring it up to the camera, it's hard to see on pattern paper, I think, but there's a score mark there and there, and then one across. It forms a grid of nine squares, equal size. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and burnish, grab my bone folder. We're gonna burnish those, and then you should be able to see them a little bit better. So both directions, so it's basically a little tic-tac-toe board, right? I'll show you again, I'll bring it up to the camera. Hopefully you guys can see it a little better this time. So it's nine. I know you can see the ones that are going this way. I'm gonna fold these so that you can see them going the other way. So it's nine squares. Now you can probably see it better. A little shadow action always helps. <laughs> it's kind of bright in here. Okay, so now that you have this little three by three square that has been sectioned, we're gonna trim up two of the sides. So I'm just gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna trim just to that first score line and stop, and then trim to this first score line and stop. And then I'm not gonna do this side because if I do that, I'm gonna cut this end off. So I'm gonna rotate it completely around so that those cuts are on the opposite side. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just go up these two marks like that. So this is what you have when you're done with your cuts. I'm gonna put it down here in case you wanna get, I'm gonna put these up so that you can see, but if you wanna grab a screenshot, and I'm gonna grab my cardstock that we need next. So for the handle, I have used a half inch by four and a quarter inch piece of matching cardstock. And since Stampin' Up! has coordinating cardstock and DSP makes it like very easy. So here's half inch by four and a quarter. Hey John, thanks for joining us. And I'm gonna take my bone folder, I'm gonna hold this end of the, the short end here. I'm gonna run my bone folder really gently. You can see I'm hardly pulling. I'm just kind of holding it, kind of like how you curl ribbon around a scissor. Have you ever done that with that curling ribbon? So you're just gonna do that and it breaks the fiber down. I'm gonna go the other direction too because I want that fiber in the paper to be broken down. And when you do that, you get this nice little curved handle, okay? Makes it a lot more pliable, a lot more of a help for us. So just gonna lay that down there. We're gonna punch two Fresh Freesia Medium Daisies. So I'm gonna punch one this way. And if you turn your punch slightly so that you put this next petal in between these petals, and I'll show you what I mean. Instead of doing it straight, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. You can save a little paper that way. See how they go in between each other's petals? And it helps you save paper, but there, I mean, it's just a scrap paper, but I'm just showing you if you're tight on paper when you're punching across, that's what you wanna do. Here, we're gonna do two white ones. And this is just basic white cardstock. All right, and this one, I'm gonna just trim off and save my cardstock. All right, we're gonna glue, grab my silicone mat. We're gonna glue these guys together. Thanks, Lou. So we're gonna put the glue on the freesias. Those are gonna be in the back. And the basic white is gonna be on the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach 
them where the petals are in between each other, just like that. Isn't that pretty? There we go. Now, we don't want a flat daisy, so we want to curl the petals. So you're going to take your bone folder, same way that I curled the piece of basket. I'm just going to just very gently kind of manipulate the tips of that daisy forward like that. Okay. And then see how it kind of cups the paper and now it's dimensional. We're going to do the other one the same way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and put my embellishment in the middle now while I have no glue um, on the back or anything because it just makes it easier. And these pieces are kind of flat. They don't stick up that much. So it's best to use the spatula end of your take your pick tool and kind of get underneath them and pick them up kind of like a pizza gets put in the oven, right? And you want to slide that off your spatula. Come on. Now, of course, it wants to stick to my spatula because I'm on camera. <laughs> oh, come on, little thing. All right, we have to get another one, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay, I picked it up. Sorry, my fingers don't work very good right now, but hopefully soon. There we go. Don't slide it all the way up onto the spatula or you'll, or you'll have the same problem that I had. All right, so there we go. And then we can just move it into place. When we're happy with where it is, we're gonna push it down. All right, and then we're gonna take a dimensional and we're gonna put one on the back of each of the daisies because that's what we'll use to decorate. I'll just hold it and then kind of smush that so it really grabs. And we'll put these away. If you don't have these glossy dots, you can see here I used Bermuda Bay on these little pool party ones and I darkened them and I have turned these orange before. So you can color them other colors with your blends. So don't forget about that when you're working on projects that you have that capability. I'm gonna flip that back around to my pointy end because I'm gonna need that. All right, let's go ahead and start working on our basket. Um, our ribbon is 12 inches of ribbon. So if you are writing down dimensions, 12 inches. So now we're going to make our basket. So these two ends, the two outer ends, are going to be turned inward towards that center square. So you're going to turn them in like this. But before we do that, we want to attach our handle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our handle and underneath on the curved part, I'm gonna put some wet adhesive and I'm gonna attach that about a quarter of an inch down and centered onto my center square. And I'm just gonna hold it for a second. It just takes a second for this glue to bond. Once it has bonded to the glue there, now we can turn these pieces in and see how the handle is hidden underneath. So now we're gonna put on the two inner points, the ones closest to the center square, I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on those two corners. Let me bring it up to the camera so that you guys can see. See a little bit of glue on both of those. So I'm gonna bring one over first halfway on that handle and hold it. And then halfway on this handle and hold it, just like that. Okay, and we're gonna let that set for a minute. We're gonna do the same thing. 
We're gonna put adhesive on the underside of the handle. And then we're gonna put it about a quarter inch down onto our center square here. Just like that and hold that till it bonds. Next, we're gonna put on the two inner corners, the ones closest to the inside square, and one on this side, just like that. And we are going to take this one and bring them in, hold them. Okay, now if you're putting anything that's heavy in here, like let's say instead of using Hershey Kisses, you decide to put nuggets in here, they're a lot heavier. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna attach something stronger than just glue on these sides. So I'm gonna show you how to reinforce the sides for a heavier candy. So Stampin' Up! sells these round and square brads. They come, um, a bunch of them, 200 in this package. They come in black and white, and some of them are squares. There's one of the square ones. Let me see if I can grab a white square one. They usually come to the top, and the little skinny circle ones always fall to the bottom because they're smaller. See, they have, they're black and white, so those are those. I have two white ones in my hand and one black if the camera's not um, focusing very well on them. There we go. So I'm going to grab two of the small white ones. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and close that up and put that away. And you need a handheld punch that's one sixteenth of an inch. So there it is. I'm trying to show you. Hopefully the camera will focus on it. See that teeny tiny little piece sticking out there? That's the size of the hole. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna slide this in and you're gonna punch a hole right where the center of that piece is. See the hole there? It looks like I did it with a dot, but that's how small it is. Hey Clem, thanks for joining us. Hey Rita, glad you're here. So we're gonna take our Brad, and we're gonna stick it through that hole there. And then we're gonna open it here on the inside. And that will reinforce that handle and it will be a lot, lot stronger. I don't know if you guys can see it on the inside, probably not, but it's in there. I'm trying to kind of turn it for you to see it, but it's inside opened. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just gonna slide my punch, and I got this punch, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell this. I did buy it from Stampin' Up! way back in the day when I first got mine, but they don't sell it anymore. So I'll link it in the description below. If it's not there right, right after the video, give me about 15, 20 minutes and I'll add it, okay? To make it easy for you in case you need this punch. So we're gonna open that on the inside. So now it's opened on both sides. Hopefully you guys can see that. The handle's kind of in the way, I think, but it's split open on the inside. So now we have our really cool little daisies and those are gonna cover that so it doesn't matter that they're there. The daisies are gonna cover it over the top. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna attach, I already stamped on this and die cut it out, but it is the For You out of Hydrangea Haven. And this is shown on the cover at 75%, so it's not the right size. This is the actual size, obviously. So I've stamped that and I've used the tag right here in the meadow dies. So if you have the meadow dies, you have this tag. If not, you can just do it on a scrap piece of paper and just angle cut your edges and make your own tag, okay? So you don't have to have this tag. So we're gonna take our ribbon and we're gonna put it through that hole. You'll just have to punch a hole in there to get your ribbon through if you um, hand do it without it. The, the hole comes when you cut the die cut. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the center of my ribbon here, and I'm gonna tie a knot 
so that that tag is right there in the middle, okay? Don't mind how I do this because it's not like a normal person does it. My fingers don't work very good right now. I'm having surgery on the 30th and I cannot wait. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna bring that little knot to the front and I'm gonna do one more knot over the top of it. Okay. So now I have my tag attached to my ribbon to make it a lot easier when I tie my piece. It's not gonna slide off of there. I don't have to worry about moving it. It's attached onto my ribbon. Thanks, John. So now we're going to tie our piece on to our piece. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna cross them in the back like an, you know, like an X and bring that to the top and that will hold my tag right where I want it, right on the top of my bow, um, of my handle, okay? And I'm gonna bring it to the top and I'm gonna do another knot. But this time I'm not gonna double knot it, just a single knot. So I'm bringing that through. Sorry that it's so awkward, guys. It's just, it's my impairment. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and position that little tag so it's nice and not, you know, stuck tight or anything like that. So there's that. And now we're just gonna tie it like a regular bow, make our loop, wrap it around and pull it through. And then I'm gonna pull on these and just make sure that they're the length and the size, the loop that I want. And when I'm happy with it, Make sure that my little tag is where I want it. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and tight and I'm gonna pull on that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim that end. It's a little long on that end, so I'm gonna just trim that end. Okay, so there's the ribbon. Let's get rid of that little piece. Now we're going to fill our basket. Now I just got just this white fill that comes in the bag, you know? So I'm just gonna just toss them in there. You don't need very much for such a tiny basket. So sometimes I get a little carried away. <laughs> so there's those, put that back in our bag. All right, I got that at the dollar store, at the local dollar store. So I'm gonna pull my backs off of my daisies my um, dimensionals, I mean, on my daisies. And then we're gonna cover up that little dot there on the side. So I'm just gonna put a daisy right over the top of that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I think this one is a little bit too low. I'm gonna raise it a bit, a little bit, come on. There we go, I did it just a tiny bit too low, there we go. So there's my little daisies on the side. And of course, my little daisy is still cupped because we manipulated the paper. So now I'm gonna fill it with some kisses. Three is about good for this treat. For those of you that were around when I did my little cotton candy slider box at Valentine's Day, you can make that box for Easter as well, you know. Um, the Dollar Tree has the little cotton candies in Easter themed now. Thank you, Lou. Oh, hi, Meme. No problem, it's okay. The replay's always there, you can watch it whenever you want to. That's the cool part about all of this is that you can watch the replay anytime you want. So there's the little candies and don't they match just so great with this? Yeah, it's, it's tiny but perfect 
for just like a coworker gift to put them down on their office desks, to hand out at the schools, to the teachers. It's perfect for so many things. And it only takes th a three by three piece of designer series paper. So with one of these pieces, you would cut it in half at three inches and in half at three inches. And out of this piece, you can get four baskets. Yeah, for the hairstylist. I gave my hairstylist the other day one of my other mini baskets that I had made. Not this one, but you're right, John. <laughs> And it's just a great little treat. It's good for neighbors if you just want to drop one off at the neighbor's door. Um, I don't know. I just think they're cute or just put them in the mailboxes or whatever at the school for the different teachers. Because with one pack of this um, pastel colored paper, you can make a ton of them. I think there's 40 sheets in here. So literally 160 baskets out of this little pack. Yeah, super economical, Rita. Do you guys um, have any questions for me? Do you want me to make another one in another color? It's a pretty quick treat. All the treats this week are fairly fast to make. I don't think not one of them is very long. Again, this one was um, Sunday's triangle box. Thanks, John. So there's the triangle sides. They're also cute if you're doing an Easter table and you're having people over. You could, instead of put a tag, you could put their name. You could write their name on a little strip of, um, you know, a half-inch piece of cardstock you could write it in script and then punch a hole make it into a tag and and dangle it and it could be a placeholder for a for a, di a nice you know easter dinner you could do that with those as well so this one was sundays and then yesterday's was a nugget holder for um these are perfect to throw in your purse because you never know when you're going to encounter somebody that's not having the best day and you could just like hand them one of these and just make them smile, you know? And they're really small. They use scraps of designer series paper, scraps of ribbon, like hardly any ribbon involved at all. So that was yesterday's. Tomorrow, I'm going to have two projects. One is going to be a bunny and one is going to be a chick. So don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be super cute. Anybody have any questions for me? Does anybody have any requests? Oh, wait, I got another birthday card in the mail from Lisa. So my birthday was last week on, um, on Friday. And I got another birthday card in the mail. Isn't it pretty? This is with the hand penned. And she used the Fresh Freesia ribbon and the Fresh Freesia DSP. It's funny that I used the Freesia today. And that's what she used for my card. But this is really pretty paper. Fantastic, Reed. I'm so glad that you made those. Hey, Lou, can I show them what you made me? I'm so proud of it. Okay, hang on. I'm going to show you what Lou made me for my birthday. Well, first she made me a diamond easel card. I did this a few weeks back. It's very good, Lou. So I have a diamond easel card, birthday card. Pretty cool, right? I think it's fantastic. I love it. Stands up like this. I beg to differ too, John. She did fantastic. Okay, are you ready for the present? Drum roll. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be hard to show you guys. 
but it's a vase of paper flowers. Isn't it gorgeous? Here's the daffodil. Look at all these different beautiful flowers. Here's another one. I love this one too. There's a little pink one down here. Look at this, how gorgeous it is. Here's a tulip. Here's, this one looks like a peony to me, I think. Isn't this gorgeous? And then this, I love this flower so much. This pretty pink flower. Even these pieces here are paper. Isn't this fantastic? The best present ever. I love it so much. And then it's in this cute little vase. Look at this cute little vase. Lou, you did amazing and I'm so proud of this. I love having it on my table in my craft studio. Everybody give Lou a clap because she did awesome. I love it so much. All right, guys, if you don't have this Hydrangea Haven stamp set, it's stunning. I know I only used the 4U out of it today, but it truly is beautiful. Let me get the dies that go with it. You have to buy them separate. It's not a bundle anymore, but see there, that one cuts the hydrangea out. And then you have this area and all of these just stick out. So when you run it through the die cut machine, they stick out and see, this is what I mean about this little border of these. So it actually cuts out nine of these little flowers individually, but with one pass through the machine. It has this really cute tag. I probably should have used this one, but I thought it might be too big for the basket because the basket's kind of tiny. And then it cuts out this little piece of flowers here. And then this little bouquet section in this corner with this one. And then it cuts out the leaves. So it's a great little bundle with the dies and um, that. I'm afraid it probably will retire. I'm afraid everything is going to retire. <laughs> Lou, I'm so, so proud of that fla those flowers. They're beautiful. You did such a fantastic job. Thank you for everybody for all your well wishes on my birthday. I really appreciate that. And most of all, I'm so grateful to have you here with me live um, weekly when you can make it. Um, it's really, really fun to interact with you guys and get to know you better every week. I know it's almost retirement list time. I have a feeling that the beginning of April, we're going to get the list. And then it'll be a frenzy. I'll do a video for you guys when the list does come out like I did with the retired list from the last mini catalog. I'll walk you through page by page so you can mark your books and it'll make it a lot easier to know what it is you want to buy. All right, I guess I'm going to let you go if there's no questions. Thank you so, so much for being here. I know it's a short one tonight. Um, the blog post is already up so if you want to see close-up pictures of the basket they're already up i i had it go up this morning even though the video wasn't live yet but i really got, appreciate you guys and thanks for being here and i will see you guys next tuesday at 8 p.m eastern time this is kelly with inky hands warm hearts happy stamping
I'll show you what I'll be purchasing or what's a good deal to purchase out of the retired stuff, Rita. False alarm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I saw that question right as I was getting ready to hit the button to end the live, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know what I think is a good value, what can stand alone as dyes that are super inexpensive, um, ribbons that I think are good value, things like that. So I'll definitely walk you through the book. And then when the new catalog comes out, of course, I'll tell you what I'm buying and you'll get to see my... Um, demonstrator pre-order because I always do a video with that um, showing you guys my big haul of products that I purchase. All right, again, one more time. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping. See you next week.